Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States and Mrs. Michelle Obama, accompanied by Medal of Honor recipient, Staff Sergeant Clinton Romache. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, from whom we come, to whom we belong, and in service we find peace, hear our prayer. Centuries ago, we were written to be called in a spur to the faithful servants of truth and justice. Arm yourselves, and be ye men of valor, and be in readiness for the conflict. For it is better for us to perish in battle than look upon the outrage of our nation. Today, Lord God, we pause to recognize men of valor who were in readiness for the conflict when the Battle of Cambish came upon them. Their sacred story is one of life and of death, the selfless service faithfully rendered at the moment of truth that rightly belongs to that small band of black knights. As a nation grateful for the spirit of the men who follow and the man who leads. We offer our gratitude for the actions of those men that day and for the actions of, as the author wrote, an intense guy, short and wiry. Thank you, O oh God, for the honor of claiming their sacred story and writing it into our nation's history. We bestow our nation's highest honors upon Staff Sergeant Romache and recognize his actions that day at Cop Keating Grant unto us your holy presence. We pray your abiding grace and eternal mercies upon the families, the friends who gave the last full measure of devotion that day. Staff Sergeant Vernon Martin, Staff Sergeant Justin Gallegos, Staff Sergeant Joshua Hart, Sergeant Joshua Kirk, Sergeant Michael Scusa, Sergeant Christopher Griffin, Specialist Stephen Mace, and PFC Kevin Thompson. Now we ask your blessing upon all of our servicemen and women at home and abroad as they support and defend our Constitution. Grant wisdom and guidance to those who lead our nation. May Sergeant Romache's example guide our service and inspire our devotion. We ask this and pray in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated, everybody. Good afternoon, and on behalf of Michelle and myself, welcome to the White House. Now, every day at the White House, we receive thousands of letters from folks all across America. And uh, at night, uh, upstairs in my study, I read a few. About three years ago, I received a letter from a mom in West Virginia. Her son, Stephan, a specialist in the Army, just 21 years old, had given his life in Afghanistan. She had received the condolence letter uh, that I had sent to her family, uh, as I send to uh, every family of the fallen, and she wrote me back. Mr. President, she said, you wrote me a letter telling me that my son was a hero. I just wanted you to know what kind of hero he was. My son was a great s soldier, she wrote. As far back as I can remember, Stefan wanted to serve his country. She spoke of how he loved his brothers in B Troop, how he would do anything for them. And of the brave actions that would cost Stefan his life, she wrote, his sacrifice was driven by pure love. Today, we are honored to be joined by Stefan's mother, Vanessa, and his father, Larry. Please stand, Vanessa and Larry. Uh, we 
were joined by the families of the seven other patriots uh, who also gave their lives that day. Uh, can we please uh, have them stand so we can acknowledge them as well? We're joined by members of Bravo Troop, whose courage that day was driven by pure love. And we gather to present the Medal of Honor to one of these soldiers, Staff Sergeant Clinton L. Romache. Clint, this is our nation's highest military decoration. It reflects the gratitude of our entire country. And so we're joined by members of Congress, leaders from across our armed forces, including Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, Marty Dempsey, uh, Army Secretary John McHugh, and Army Chief of Staff General Ray Odierno. Uh, we are especially honored to be joined by Clint's 4th Infantry Division, Iron Horse soldiers, and members of the Medal of Honor Society who today welcome you into their ranks. Now, uh, despite all this attention, you may already have a sense that Clint is a pretty humble guy. We just spent some time together in the Oval Office. Uh, he grew up in Lake City, California, population less than 100. Uh, we welcomed his family, including mom and dad, uh, Tish and Gary. Uh, Clint, I hope he uh, doesn't mind that he shared that uh, Clint was actually born at home. Uh, these days, Clint works in the oil fields of North Dakota. He is a man of faith, uh, and after more than a decade in uniform, he says the thing he looks forward to the most is just being a husband and a father. Uh, in fact, this is not even the biggest event for Clint this week, uh, because tomorrow he and his wife Tammy will celebrate their 13th wedding anniversary. Uh, Clint and Tammy, this is probably not the kind of intimate anniversary you planned, <laughs> uh, but we're so glad uh, that you're here uh, along with your three beautiful children, uh, Desi, Gwen, and Colin. Colin is not as shy as Clint. <laughs> uh, he was in the Oval Office and he was racing around pretty good. <laughs> and sampled a number of the apples before he found the one that was just right. <laughs> now, to truly understand the extraordinary actions for which Clint is being honored, uh, you need to understand the almost unbelievable conditions under which he and B Troop served. This was a time in 2009 when many of our troops uh, still served in small, rugged outposts, even as our commanders were shifting their focus to larger towns and cities. So Combat Outpost Keating was a collection of buildings of concrete and plywood with trenches and sandbags. Uh, of all the outposts in Afghanistan, Keating was among the re most remote. It sat at the bottom of a steep valley, surrounded by mountains terrain that a later investigation said gave ideal cover for insurgents to attack. Cop Keating, the investigation found, was tactically indefensible. But that's what these soldiers were asked to do, defend the indefensible. The attack came in the morning, just as the sun rose. Some of our guys were standing guard. Uh, most, like Clint, were still sleeping. The explosions shook them out of their beds and sent them rushing for their weapons, and soon the awful odds became clear. These 53 Americans were surrounded by more than 300 Taliban fighters. What happened next has been described as one of the most intense battles of the entire war in Afghanistan. The attackers had the advantage, the high ground, the mountains above, and they were unleashing everything they had rocket-propelled grenades, heavy machine guns, mortars, snipers taking aim. 
To those Americans down below, the fire was coming in from every single direction. They'd never seen anything like it. With gunfire impacting all around him, Clint raced to one of the barracks and grabbed a machine gun. He took aim at one of the enemy machine teams and took it out. A rocket-propelled grenade exploded, sending sharpnel, uh, shrapnel into his hip, his arm, and his neck. But he kept fighting, disregarding his own wounds and tending to an injured comrade instead. Then, over the radio, came words no soldier ever wants to hear. Enemy in the wire. The Taliban had penetrated the camp. They were taking over buildings. The combat was close, at times as close as 10 feet. When Clint took aim at three of them, they never took another step. But still, the enemy advanced. So the Americans pulled back to buildings that were easier to defend to make one last stand. One of them was later compared to the Alamo. One of them later compared it to the Alamo. Keating, it seemed, was going to be overrun, and that's when Clint Romache decided to retake that camp. Clint gathered up his guys, and they began to fight their way back, storming one building, then another, pushing the enemy back, having to actually shoot up at the enemy in the mountains above. By now, most of the camp was on fire. Amid the flames and smoke, Clint stood in the doorway, calling in airstrikes that shook the earth all around them. Over the radio, they heard comrades who were pinned down in a Humvee. So Clint and his team unloaded everything they had into the enemy positions, and with that cover, three wounded Americans made their escape, uh, including a grievously injured Stephen Mace. But more Americans, their bodies, were still out there. And Clint Romache lives the soldier's creed. I will never leave a fallen comrade. So he and his team started charging as enemy fire poured down. And they kept charging, 50 meters, 80 meters, ultimately a 100-meter run through a hail of bullets. And they reached their fallen friends, and they brought them home. Now, throughout history, uh, the question has often been asked, uh, why? Why do those in uniform take such extraordinary risks? And what compels them to such courage? You ask Clint and any of these soldiers who are here today, and they'll tell you, uh, yes, they fight for their country, and they fight for our freedom. Yes, they fight to come home to their families. But most of all, they fight for each other, uh, to keep each other safe, and to have each other's backs. When I called Clint to tell him that he would receive this medal, he said he was honored, but he also said it wasn't just me out there, it was a team effort. And so today, we also honor this American team, including those who made the ultimate sacrifice. Private First Class Kevin Thompson, who would have turned 26 years old today. Sergeant Michael Scusa. Sergeant Joshua Kirk. Sergeant Christopher Griffin. Staff Sergeant Justin Gallegos. Staff Sergeant Vernon Martin. Sergeant Joshua Hart. Specialist Stephen Mace. Each of these patriots gave their lives looking out for each other. In a battle that raged all day, that brand of selflessness was displayed again and again and again. Soldiers exposing themselves to enemy fire to pull a comrade to safety, tending to each other's wounds, performing buddy transfusions, giving each other their own blood. If you seek a measure of that day, you need to look no further than the medals and ribbons that grace their chests. For their sustained heroism, 37 Army Commendation Medals. For their wounds, 27 Purple Hearts. For their valor, 18 Bronze Stars. For their gallantry, 9 Silver Stars. These men were outnumbered, outgunned, and almost overrun. Looking back, one of them said, I'm surprised any of us made it out. But they are here today. And I would ask these soldiers, this band of brothers, to stand and accept the gratitude of our entire nation.
There are many lessons from Cobb Keating. One of them is that our troops should never, ever be put in a position where they have to defend the indefensible. But that's what these soldiers did for each other in sacrifice driven by pure love. And because they did, eight grieving families were at least able to welcome their soldiers home one last time. And more than 40 American soldiers are alive today to carry on, to keep alive the memory of their fallen brothers, to help make sure that this country that we love so much remains strong and free. What was it that turned the tide that day? How was it that so few Americans prevailed against so many? As we prepared for the reading of the citation, uh, I'll leave you with the words of Clint himself. Because they say something about our army and they say something about America, they say something about our spirit, which will never be broken. We weren't going to be beat that day, Clint said. You're not going to back down in the face of adversity like that. We were just going to win, plain and simple. God bless you, Clint Romache, and all of your team. God bless all who serve, and God bless the United States of America. With that, I'd like uh, the citation to be read. The President of the United States of America, <clears throat> authorized by Act of Congress, March 3, 1863, has awarded in the name of Congress the Medal of Honor to Staff Sergeant Clinton L. Romache, United States Army, for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty. Staff Sergeant Clinton L. Romache distinguished himself by acts of gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty while serving as a section leader with Bravo Troop, 3rd Squadron, 61st Cavalry Regiment, 4th Brigade Combat Team, 4th Infantry Division during combat operations against an armed enemy at Combat Outpost Keating, Kamdesh District, Nuristan Province, Afghanistan, on October 3rd, 2009. On that morning, Staff Sergeant Romache and his comrades awakened to an attack by an estimated 300 enemy fighters occupying the high ground on all four sides of the complex, employing concentrated fire from recoilless rifles, rocket-propelled grenades, anti-aircraft machine guns, mortars, and small arms fire. Staff Sergeant Romache moved uncovered under intense enemy fire to conduct a reconnaissance of the battlefield and seek reinforcements from the barracks before returning to action with the support of an assistant gunner. Staff Sergeant Romache took out an enemy machine gun team and, while engaging a second, the generator he was using for cover was struck by a rocket-propelled grenade, inflicting him with shrapnel wounds. Undeterred by his injuries, Staff Sergeant Romache continued to fight and upon the arrival of another soldier to aid him and the assistant gunner, he again rushed through the exposed avenue to assemble additional soldiers. Staff Sergeant Romache then mobilized a five-man team and returned to the fight equipped with a sniper rifle. With complete disregard for his own safety, Staff Sergeant Romache continually exposed himself to heavy enemy fire as he moved confidently about the battlefield, engaging and destroying multiple enemy targets, including three Taliban fighters who had breached the combat outpost's perimeter. While orchestrating a successful plan to secure and reinforce key points of the battlefield, Staff Sergeant Romache maintained radio communication with the Tactical Operations Center. As the enemy forces attacked with even greater ferocity, Unleashing a barrage of rocket-propelled grenades and recoilless rifle rounds, Staff Sergeant Romache identified the point of attack and directed air support to destroy over 30 enemy fighters. After receiving reports that seriously injured soldiers were at a distant battle position, Staff Sergeant Romache and his team provided covering fire to allow the injured soldiers to safely reach the aid station. Upon receipt of orders to proceed to the next objective, his team pushed forward 100 meters under overwhelming enemy fire to recover and prevent the enemy fighters from taking the bodies of their fallen comrades. Staff Sergeant Romache's heroic actions throughout the day-long battle were critical in suppressing an enemy that had far greater numbers. His extraordinary efforts gave Bravo Troop the opportunity to regroup, reorganize, and prepare for the counterattack that allowed the troop to account for its personnel and secure combat outpost Keating. 
Staff Sergeant Romache's discipline and extraordinary heroism above and beyond the call of duty reflect great credit upon himself, Bravo Troop, 3rd Squadron, 61st Cavalry Regiment, 4th Brigade Combat Team, 4th Infantry Division, and the United States Army. Let us pray. Today, Almighty God, we have gathered to give recognition to the spirit that made our country great, a willingness to give totally of ourselves, even into death, for the great blessings of being a part of this country, for the honor and example of Staff Sergeant Romache brings to our lives, we give you thanks. He was lent to our army for a few short years. We were deeply blessed by his presence. As his ancestors inspired his service, may he inspire generations to greater service and devotion. In your strength, may we protect others. In your providence, may we be kept safe. May we turn our hearts towards you each and every day. We ask this and pray in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, most of all, thank you for Clint and the entire team for their extraordinary service and devotion to our country. Uh, we're going to have an opportunity to uh, celebrate, uh, and there's going to be a wonderful reception. I hear the food around here is pretty good. Uh, I, know the, I know the band is good, and uh, Colin really needs to get down. <laughs> so uh, enjoy, everybody. Give, uh, give our newest uh, recipient of the, the Medal of Honor uh, a big round of applause once again. <laughs> 